So I have a question from Carmine, and Carmine asks, would you be able to give a demonstration using the pelvis model of the orientation of the spine, pelvis, and femur at each stage of propulsion during the gait cycle? Let's see if we can pull this off. So Carmine, um, I'm gonna walk you through the gait cycle, pun intended. I'm gonna walk you through the gait cycle using the left hip as my frame of reference so we can discuss the entire propulsive phase from the earliest to the latest. And then we'll go ahead and we'll show you on the pelvis model as you request it. So as I'm striding forward with my left leg, I have to advance the left side of my pelvis forward, which means that I need a concentric overcoming strategy in the pelvic diaphragm to move that hip forward. To acquire the position of the extremity downward means they have to eccentrically orient the anterior aspect of the pelvic outlet. And because I'm not on the ground yet with my foot, so I'm just striding forward with my left foot, there can't be a propulsive strategy. There's nothing to push against. So I have an eccentric yielding strategy in the anterior aspect of the pelvic outlet. Now, as I strike the ground, I must begin propelling immediately. If I don't propel, I would literally collapse into the ground. Now, in a cutting phase, this might be a dampening strategy that I would use, but because we're talking about the gait cycle, I wanna maintain my forward momentum. So as I strike the ground, because of the position of the extremity, I'm still eccentrically oriented, but now I have an overcoming strategy to push up. At the same time, I now have to acquire a yielding strategy posteriorly because I have to actually decelerate the left side of my pelvis to allow the right side to begin its advancement forward. So this means I'm going to be concentric yielding, eccentric overcoming in the earliest phase of propulsion. As I pass over through mid to max propulsion, I'm now in an IR internally rotated exhalation strategy, which means that my anterior outlet has to push up into concentric orientation. For me to pass over this left hip, I have to really hold this left hip back now, which means that to acquire internal rotation on this side, I have to eccentrically orient and yield in the left posterior hip. I've got a concentric overcoming of the anterior aspect of the pelvic outlet. I've got eccentric yielding on the posterior aspect. The delay on the left side now allows the right side of the pelvis to advance forward. As I move into a late position of propulsion, my extremity is now extended below me once again. So I'm moving towards inhalation, external rotation in the left hip. Because of the pelvic orientation, I now have an eccentric overcoming strategy. My foot is still on the ground, so I have to overcome. But because my foot is leaving the ground, I'm moving towards an eccentric strategy anteriorly. I'm still advancing the right side of my pelvis forward, so I'm still holding the left side back. So I'm moving in the forward direction, so I have a concentric orientation posteriorly, but it's still a yielding strategy to allow the right side to advance forward. So basically, as I move through the gait cycle, I'm moving from inhalation external rotation to exhalation internal rotation to inhalation external rotation again. And this would constitute the entire propulsive phase of gait. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that when we talk about inhalation and exhalation strategies, we're talking about the positions, the orientations, and the muscle actions that are taking place. This doesn't mean that I have to sequence respiration with gait. Being able to overcome this is one of the benefits of being bipedal. If we were quadrupeds, we would be forced to sequence our breathing with our gait cycle. Now let's see what this looks like in the pelvis model. So again, let's use the left side as our frame of reference. As I stride forward before my foot hits the ground to position my extremity forward, I have to have a concentric overcoming strategy on the posterior aspect of the hip to advance the hip forward. I'm gonna be in an inhaled position. This is gonna be external rotation of the ilium, counter nutation of the base of the sacrum on this side. As I strike the ground, I must start propelling. So my eccentric yielding strategy now becomes eccentric overcoming. Otherwise, I would collapse into the ground or I would just dampen and I would not be able to continue my propulsion forward. 
I have to start decelerating the left side of the pelvis. So my concentric orientation is still concentric because I'm still moving this hip forward, but I have to start to delay this side so I can begin to advance the right side forward. So this becomes a concentric yielding strategy. As I pass over the leg through mid to max propulsion, the anterior aspect of the pelvic outlet now becomes concentrically oriented to provide positive support for this extremity in internal rotation. So the ilium is now internally rotated, my sacrum is now nutated, and the posterior aspect of the pelvis is now eccentrically oriented which essentially puts the brakes on the left side to allow the right side to advance forward as the right leg swings through. As I pass mid to max propulsion and the leg becomes extended behind me, I once again have to reacquire my inhaled position of the externally rotated ilium and the counter nutated sacrum. This is going to begin the eccentric orientation of the anterior outlet and it, once again a concentric orientation of the posterior outlet, but because my foot's on the ground, I'm still eccentric overcoming, and because I still have to delay the left side of the pelvis to allow the right side to advance, I'm now concentric and yielding posteriorly. Then I just simply repeat the cycle as I'm walking forward. So if we were looking down in the pelvis, as I step forward with the left side, I move towards inhalation. As I strike the ground, I move towards exhalation and as I leave the ground once again I move towards inhalation. So as I move through the gait cycle it becomes ER, IR, ER, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, early, mid, and late propulsion.